I'll be discussing some of the problems uh, with using the augmented Frankel wave regressions for determining the relative importance of RMB and US dollar. Um, and then followed, following that, we'll discuss an alternative method to try to overcome these problems. Uh, and my concluding remarks will be on the um, internationalization of RMB. So the economic rise of China has led to the question of whether the exchange rate management in Asia has shifted course to pay more attention to the RMB as a key reference currency. Um, as we know, China is already one of the top, if not the most important trading partner for most Asian economies. Um, region, regional production networks have spread rapidly, with China playing a key role in these networks. So strengthening trade, investment, financial linkages gives Asian countries the incentive to maintain um, exchange rate stability with China, uh, along with the need to have uh, external competitiveness. So this is the original uh, Frankel wave regression, um, where the weights, uh, being the coefficients, capture both the direct effects of the international currency on the home currency, as well as indirect effects through regional currencies. So as we know, this region has been, uh, even after the Asian financial crisis, the weight on the US dollar uh, remains very high. And so um, we were called the uh, East Asian dollar standard. Uh, by jointly pegging to, it's a soft peg, by jointly pegging to the US dollar, um, the, we managed to achieve stable intra-regional exchange rates. This stability in the intra-regional exchange rates is actually a crucial factor for developing the production networks. Uh, it has been found that intermediate goods trade in production networks is more sensitive to exchange rate volatility compared to other kinds of trade. Meanwhile, the renminbi's pack to the US dollar gives further incentives for the Asian economies to benchmark their currencies against the US dollar. So now that China is gradually decoupling the renminbi from the US dollar, we would expect that the Asian currencies exhibit greater co-movements with the renminbi. However, the US dollar is still the preeminent international currency enjoying incumbency uh, advantages and network effects. So it is likely to still retain uh, influence on exchange rates in this region. So the question then is, has the renminbi overtaken the US dollar as the dominant reference currency in this region? So here are some related studies which Professor Kawai already went through. Um, I would just like to highlight that uh, the last two are papers which uh, use the augmented Frankel wave regressions and found that the renminbi is the dominant reference currency and that a de facto renminbi block has already emerged here. So we move now to the problems with using such augmented Frankel wave regressions. Um, as explained uh, yesterday, basically you need to um, introduce the renminbi term into the Frankel way regression and investi empirical investigations are hampered in a couple of ways. First is when the renminbi is packed to the US dollar, uh, we can't distinguish between the two currency movements. So a judicious choice of the sample period would then be needed to overcome this problem. So we have two windows. Um, from May 2005 to um, October 2008 for pre-crisis and post-global financial crisis would be from June 2010 onwards. So these are the two periods when the RMBB is sort of decoupled from the US dollar. Um, however, even though there's some decoupling, um, the correlations between the renminbi and US dollar movements are still very high in these two periods. 
leading to multicollinearity problems in the regressions. So some authors have um, tried to overcome that by using orthogonalized Rambimbi movements, which involves running first a regression of the Rambimbi against the US dollar, and then using the residuals in the Franco way regressions. Um, the problem with doing that is basically when you, there's ambiguity between ambiguity in separating the effects of the two currencies, we are attributing the effect to the US dollar first because you're using residuals for RMB. So, um, but going back to using non orthogonalized RMB movements. Um, means going back to the same multicollinearity problem. And uh, that, multi, uh, that kind of problem will give us imprecise estimates as well as unstable estimates to the weights. So there's actually a more serious problem than the multicollinearity problem uh, when we use actual Remibi movements in the Frankel way regressions, and that is endogeneity. Uh, because the renminbi is a regional currency, uh, it, along with the other Asian currencies, they are subjected to common regional shocks from outside the system. So this would cause the renminbi to have a higher correlation with the Asian currencies and is uh, wrongly being attributed to the renminbi having a higher weight in the implicit basket. So it could well be that the large weights that we see in some of the studies uh, would, would, could be due to this overestimation caused by the lack of an exogeneity in the RMB variable. So we have two problems, one of identification, uh, separating the, the individual effects of the two currencies, and the other problem is um, that of endogeneity. Um, I propose that we use uh, country-specific VAR models because th these models uh, allow the variables, the exchange rate variables, to be uh, to have mutual interactions. Um, to overcome the identification problems, we can have two sets of models. In the first set of model, um, we look at the impact of the we look at the impact of the um, U.S. dollar on the home currency in terms of their bilateral rates with RMB. So in the first set of models, we will not be able to tell how RMB influenced the home currency. And then we repeat the analysis, but this time we are going to use bilateral rates against the US dollar instead. Now for this second set of model, we can assess the impact of the renminbi against the home currency but not that of the not the effect of the US dollar. In order to make the um, facilitate comparisons of results across these two sets of models, um, we will standardize all the bilateral exchange rates so that they all have uh, standard deviation equals to one. So this, so for each of these nine uh, Asian countries, we run two. Uh, Two, two VAR models, and we use the sample periods as explained just now. Um, however, restricting to these periods means that we have to use, uh, analyze daily data for, um, due to degrees of freedom considerations. The, these exchange rates are all tested to be I1, so our VARs are in first differences. Um, we look at the impulse response function uh, the impulse responses of the home currency to a US dollar shock from the first set of VARs, and then the impulse response of the home currency to the RMB shock for the second set of VARs. Now, since all the variables uh, in these VAR models are standardized to have a variance equal to one, the impulse responses are now all in terms of the standard deviations. So this makes it comparable across these two sets of models. Um, here are the results. Uh, for the pre-crisis period, the home currency is uh, more responsive to a US dollar shock than to a RMB shock. 
So we see that an unanticipated one standard deviation shock to the US dollar produces significant impulse responses in all Asian countries. So that will be the left side, the left panel. You see that all the impulse responses are significant and quite high. Um, on the other hand, by contrast, uh, a shock to the renminbi produces either insignificant or marginally significant impulse responses during the pre-crisis period. So uh, it will be this as well as the previous charts here. So we infer that the US dollar shock plays a bigger role than the renminbi in determining movements in Asian currencies before the global financial crisis. Uh, these are the charts for the post-crisis period. Except for Hong Kong, uh, we see that the renminbi shock now elicits a stronger uh, or similar level of response from the home currency compared to a US dollar shock. So we obtain significant responses to a RMB shock in all the cases, uh, ranging between 0.1 to 0.2 standard deviations. So that would be the right-hand side for this uh, two slides. Uh, meanwhile, our US dollar shock produces insignificant responses uh, for India, Korea, and Malaysia. And for the other currencies, they respond by 0.1 to 0.2 standard deviations. Um, the insignificance for India and Malaysia are marginal. So, despite the US dollar's weaker impact post crisis, uh, it still retains some influence as a reference currency. So we do not, uh, the results don't seem to support the claim that the UN bloc is already here. Uh, for robustness check, basically our models, uh, we have the oil, we include the oil price as an exogenous variable in all the models. And we use Cholesky decomposition uh, using these orderings here. Uh, but what happens is when we check the residuals of the reduced form VAR, we found that the correlations are very weak except for, with, with some exceptions. So changing the order of the variables uh, actually still gives us qualitatively similar results. So it's not surprising uh, that the renminbi is now exerting greater influence on our regional currencies. Uh, because since the onset of the crisis, the China has taken concrete steps to reduce its, uh, the dependency of its economy on the US dollar, as well as broaden the international use of RMB. So these are the various uh, initiatives, um, allowing companies to settle cross-border trades in RMB, facilitating the issuance of RMB-denominated financial products, such as the dim sum bonds, allowing offshore banks and central banks to invest in China's interbank bond market. This is important because it widens the investment channels for RMB uh, recycling back to China. Uh, they launch uh, RMB-denominated outward, outward direct investments as well as foreign direct investments and more recently signed bilateral swap agreements with other central banks. Uh, but as we know, the, at present, the RMB is still not fully convertible and its capital account is still, very tightly, is still tightly regulated. Um, there are challenges to China's uh, liberalising its capital accounts because the capital account liberalisation is tightly linked to domestic sector reforms, as, uh, such as interest rate liberalisation, uh, as well as the adjustment of the China's economic development model. So the pace for current account liberalisation would actually depend on internal political economy uh, and this process would definitely take time. Besides premature liberalisation of the capital account before domestic financial reforms are complete can lead to crisis. Uh, furthermore, deregulating the capital account now is not a good idea because there's extreme and volatile global liquidity. So Will there be a UN bloc uh, in Asia in the future? Well, the, as long as the RMB is um, tracking the US dollar closely, now it's, it has a trading ban of uh, plus minus 1%, we would expect that the Asian currencies will still uh, have strong linkage, linkages with the US dollar. 
But as the renminbi delinks from the US dollar, uh, China's central role in Asian uh, trade production network suggests that the RMB would indeed become a regional lead currency. Nonetheless, um, the, the fear of China's economic and political dominance means that it's unlikely that the Asian currencies will just benchmark against the Yuan. Uh, more likely, it will benchmark against more than one currency. Just a, uh, briefly uh, uh, recapturing uh, what uh, she has done. Uh, she uh, uh, identifies uh, problems with uh, the Frankel Way regression with uh, the renminbi included on the right hand side. Uh, if uh, the renminbi uh, exchange rate is uh, a non orthogonalized exchange rate, then it creates a multicollinearity problem. Uh, but uh, she maintains that uh, even if uh, orthogonal, orthogonalized renminbi is used, uh, the, the problem is there. Uh, she says a simultaneity problem uh, because of common shocks affecting uh, the movements of the renminbi and other Asian currencies. But the common factors, uh, common factors are common factors and do not create uh, really simultaneity problems. Perhaps uh, what uh, uh, she was talking about is a possibility that uh, the renminbi itself may be affected by uh, the movements of other Asian currencies. In other words, when you estimate uh, the Frankel way regression equation for the renminbi, then perhaps uh, some uh, Asian currencies should be included on the right hand side. I thought uh, that, that that was what uh, she was talking about. And then uh, uh, she uses two sets of uh, uh, VAR models for each Asian currency. Uh, so the first set uh, uses uh, the renminbi as a uh, numeria currency, and including uh, the US dollar, euro, the Japanese yen, and a particular Asian currency. And then in the second set, uh, she uses the US dollar as a numeria, and on the right hand side, uh, the, uh, uh, sorry, the variables include the renminbi, the euro, the Japanese yen, and uh, particular currency I. So she runs two, two different uh, uh, VAR uh, uh, equations uh, for, for all, all uh, currencies, uh, Asian currencies individually, uh, separately. And then uh, she obtains uh, impulse responses uh, of currency I to a shock to the US dollar and a shock to the renminbi exchange rate. Uh, using uh, the first uh, 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 set of uh, equations where the renminbi is used as a numeria, uh, she obtains uh, impulse responses of uh, a particular uh, Asian currency, I, to a shock to uh, the uh, U.S. dollar renminbi uh, exchange rate. Okay. And then in the second set, she obtains uh, impulse responses of uh, a local currency, uh, the, uh, a particular uh, Asian currency uh, exchange rate to a uh, shock to uh, renminbi uh, to uh, the U.S. dollar exchange rate. Uh, and then, uh, she finds that uh, US dollar shock had a significant uh, impact uh, on Asian currencies before the global financial crisis, but uh, its impact declined after the global financial crisis. And uh, uh, a, a renminbi shock had uh, either stronger 
uh, impact or similar impact on Asian currencies in comparison to a US dollar uh, uh, shock uh, in the post-global uh, financial crisis period. And then she concludes that a de facto renminbi block has not emerged in Asia. Uh, but are the two impulse uh, responses really comparable? Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a question uh, that came up to my mind. Uh, uh, in her original paper, which I read, uh, the oil prices were not included. Uh, but now I'm very happy that uh, uh, the oil prices are included to address the issue of common shocks, which uh, uh, she talks about. Uh, some common shocks uh, uh, should be included because uh, that, that, that's what uh, she was talking about. Uh, uh, so, so some exogenous variables, uh, okay. uh, regional, some common shocks or global common shocks. And then uh, to verify uh, potential simultaneity problems for the renminbi, perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, e even though the regression itself may be incomplete, uh, maybe uh, 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 Dr. Chow uh, may uh, run the renminbi regression equation by including you know, some Asian currencies. Uh, uh, there is a paper uh, that claims that uh, the Korean won uh, from time to time affects the renminbi. Uh, uh, so, so that that uh, I, I thought that was uh, one of uh, the major concerns that uh, she has from the point of view of uh, simultaneity uh, problem. Okay, now the VAR equation she runs. Uh, uh, two two uh, separate uh, uh, variables, uh, but but how about uh, running uh, everything at uh, the same time, uh, rather than uh, having two different sets? Uh, maybe choose some numerical currency, maybe SDR, uh, you know, ju just like a Frankel way a regression, or Swiss franc, or some other numerical currency, so here I'm writing uh, SDR, so include uh, the US dollar, uh, Euro, Japanese yen, renminbi, and uh, particular Asian currency. Uh, and, and of course uh, include uh, uh, some uh, common shock uh, variables. Uh, and here uh, the renminbi exchange rate may be uh, either orthogonalized or maybe non-orthogonalized. Uh, then uh, conduct uh, some impulse uh, response analysis uh, for a US dollar shock uh, or a renminbi shock, and uh, obtain some uh, you know, uh, variance uh, decomposition of uh, the uh, particular uh, Asian currency I and find the contribution of variation of US dollar shock and uh, contribution of uh, renminbi shock to the variation of, uh, of uh, uh, particular uh, Asian currency I. Uh, then I think in this way, perhaps uh, you know, people may not be uh, that much concerned with the question whether uh, uh, VAR under assumption one and VAR under assumption two were really, you know, comparable. Now uh, she uh, comes up with uh, uh, the conclusion that uh, uh, de facto renminbi uh, uh, exchange rate, uh, renminbi block, uh, 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 has not uh, has not uh, emerged in Asia. But I just wonder, uh, by looking at her result, uh, this is a post-global uh, financial crisis period. Uh, in the case of Hong Kong, it's clear that uh, the importance of US dollar is there. But apart from Hong Kong, you know, in many other currencies, the renminbi seems to be more dominant. 
than the US dollar. So actually, I thought uh, her finding would uh, say that uh, uh, East Asia is not heading towards uh, towards a renminbi, renminbi block. And there is a strong indication there. Uh, so my, uh, my suggestion is uh, to re redo uh, the VAR by including all the variables uh, uh, just into one equation uh, and uh, do the exercise. But I, uh, uh, towards the end of her presentation, uh, she said that uh, uh, the renminbi block, of the formation of uh, renminbi block is unlikely in Asia. And she suggested a sort of more than one regional currency uh, uh, to play an uh, important, uh, important role. And uh, that, that, that is uh, closer to my heart. Uh, may, maybe uh, more, more currency uh, cooperation uh, would, be, uh, would be quite, uh, quite useful. Okay, thank you.